This is a News 4 breaking news update. All right, we come on the air for a special report. We've got a breaking news update from that small plane that crashed in Montgomery County near Gaithersburg. A small plane crashed into power lines. We're told the pilot and a passenger are still on board, dangling about 100 feet above ground. We want to take you live now to a press conference with an update. We are supposed to hear from the Montgomery County Fire Chief Scott Goldstein. Let's listen. There in. are several concerns ongoing. While there is a large area of power outage in Montgomery County, which I will talk about, there is no um, other way to determine if it's safe to access the tower until it is grounded or bonded, which means crews have to go up to the wires themselves to put clamps or cables onto the wires to then ensure that there's no static electricity, no residual power. So the, the static and grounding issue, as well as then vibration of the airplane, securing the airplane to the tower structure. We have resources on site. They've arrived in about the last 30 minutes from PEPCO's contractor that deals with these, these towers, as well as an extraordinarily large crane from a local company some may know it, digging and rigging from Clarksburg. They are here to, to assist. We still believe that we have about 35 to 40 minutes worth of, of time before the other resources from the, the support agencies arrive, roughly 930. There is resources from Montgomery County Fire Rescue, District of Columbia Fire Rescue, Montgomery County Police, and an assortment of other agencies here. One of our concerns is the safety of the occupants in the airplane, the safety of the fire rescue personnel, and the, re, the rescue thereof. We are taking measured and risk balanced steps to approach this activity, and we'll be doing this in a manner which we will aim to extricate these two folks out of the plane. Elect talking about PEPCO's outages, the number in the community is 85,000 to 90,000 customers are without power. As you all have reported, that is a wide swath from here down towards Wheaton, parts of Silver Spring, Olney, Aspen Hill, the large portion of, of the county. I have no information. I'm not here to talk about the power outage and the power restoration. I'm here about the the rescue operations here. That's the information that I have. I will take a few short questions and then we'll be back at a second point. Are you in communication or someone in communication with those folks and how are you keeping them on? Absolutely. That is a challenge. Absolutely. We are in communication with them. We have their, their cell phones. We are moderating the use of that cell phones to conserve the battery of those devices while they're up there but we have regular check-in intervals with them, then we are making those communications. How are they? That information is not for release at this time. Looking at the fog that's kind of setting in there, how does that affect uh, potential rescue operations there? So the weather is, is going to make visibility worse by the fog. The fog is going to make things more wet, more slippery, um, but it's part of our risk benefit and part of what we're calculating. So. Chief, can, sorry, can you walk through the exact order of operations of, of what is happening now and what is happening next? Who goes first? And, and just, I'm sorry, can you just walk through that sure. one more time? So no worries. Clear on that. And then uh, another question after that, if you don't mind. Go ahead. So yeah. the, the who is going to be a combined teams. Okay. So the what will be the, the tower contractor will go up and do what is called grounding or what may be referred to other times as grounding and bonding in which they go up, place cables onto the wires, and then have a direct path of that any static or residual electricity to a ground source. That'll be done by the tower contractors as well as fire rescue personnel. Once we then have the ability to get onto the tower, we will use either the bucket trucks or the crane to make access to where the aircraft is on the tower and then work to secure the aircraft to the tower. Again, that'll be a combination of the tower company and fire rescue personnel. Then we will work to 
bring the occupants of the plane out and down to ground and transport to ho area hospitals. So part of the process is, is physically, once you're up there, getting the plane attached to the tower before and, and presumably be to ensure that the plane is secure when you make the extraction? As with any car extrication, we make the car stable before we take the people out of the car. Take this to the aircraft. We want to make the aircraft stable to the tower before we try to remove the occupants of the aircraft out of the aircraft. And then my final question, sorry, is what what can you say about the stability, the, 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 the safety, how the aircraft is being held up right now? Uh, we, is it we, precarious? Is it, is it secure? Uh, not secure, but you know, how would you describe that? An aircraft hit an aerial tower at about 100 feet in the air. It's not going to be uh, stable until it's chained and strapped in place. Any movement, any accidental movement could make the circumstance worse. Chief, Thank I'm you. sorry, you have information about the condition of the people in the plane, but you can't share it? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Uh, are you expecting to learn more, or why can't you share that at the moment? Can we presume they're doing well? We have been in contact with the people in the aircraft. A couple of clarifying sorry, sorry. questions. Could you confirm how many people are no. on the aircraft? Now? I will say occupants. That's what I said. All right, so thank you very much. Pete will advise when we'll do the next one, but that's uh, the information we have at this time. One more no, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right, so we've just been listening into an update from the Montgomery County Fire Chief Scott Goldstein, who is bringing us up to speed with the, the very latest on this plane that crashed into a high transmission line north of Gaithersburg. This is in the Montgomery Village area. Guys, why don't we bring up that map if we can, just again uh, to give people an idea of where this is happening. So you can see here, this is Rothbury Drive, Goshen Road. It's right in that area of Montgomery Village, which, which sits just north of Gaithersburg. We're told from the FAA that this plane was leaving New York this afternoon. The plane departed Westchester County Airport, which is in White Plains, New York, this afternoon, and then it crashed into that transmission line at about 540 this evening. We're told that it was headed to the Montgomery Air Park, which is really just a very short distance south of where this plane got tangled up into those power lines. We're told that there is a pilot on board and one other passenger. You heard the fire chief there. He didn't really want to uh, go into specifics about the condition of those passengers. But earlier, a spokesperson for the fire department there in Montgomery County said they are doing OK. And I think we can all assume that that's a very, uh, you know, loose phrasing there. It, kind of difficult to imagine how anyone could be okay when you're dangling about 100 feet in the air with live power lines all around you. But we're told that they're doing okay and that they're remaining relatively calm given the circumstances. You heard the fire chief there say that they are in communication with the two people on board, but they're worried about cell phone battery with these two. Uh, whether or not they're going to be up there for a while, they want to make sure that they can still reach these people if they need to. And they described a very, very difficult process to get to these individuals and rescue them down. If we can, guys, why don't we go ahead and roll some of that video to show everyone again what we're talking about. This is a small single engine plane that's stuck on that high transmission line. You gotta wonder how it's hanging up there and how it's been hanging up there for so long. So let me run real quick through the process that the fire chief described. First of all, you've got live power lines dangling from this area. Everyone in the area has been told to please stay away because these lines are hot. So right now, Pepco and its contractors are trying to get those lines grounded, which the chief described as a very tenuous process, could be several hours until they get these lines grounded. Once they do that, they'll need to get up to the plane, secure the plane to the tower, because any accidental movement, as the chief said, could unlodge that plane. Once they get the plane secure, then they'll be able to attempt to extricate the two people that are trapped inside. Once all that's done, then you got to get the plane down from there. And then, only then, can Pepco and its contractors start to get that line fixed. There are about 85,000, maybe upwards of 90,000 Pepco customers in, the Mon in Montgomery County who are without power tonight. And, and folks, if you're watching on the app and your power's out, uh, 
you know, we're, we're thinking about you tonight, but the, the really the only thing we can say is there's no real good news there. There haven't been any great updates on when that power might be restored. But if you've been if you've been listening in, it's going to be several hours, probably well into tomorrow. Make sure you stay with NBC Washington on air and online. We'll be bringing you updates throughout the evening and we will have a live report from Montgomery County with the very latest coming up on News 4 at 11 that follows Sunday Night Football. We'll see you then.